So, Dr. Z, 118 years ago, the Wright brothers lifted off with the first powered flight on Earth. Now we are on the cusp of the first powered flight on Mars with the Mars helicopter Ingenuity. How does it feel to be at this point? I've been thinking about this a lot. And frankly, I've been thinking about it when I was on a plane last night flying from D.C. to L.A. And uh, you, you just think about that Wright Brothers flight, right? 12 seconds, you know, just, you know, it's not even, you know, that impressive, right? Kind of down a, a football field, you know, of course, it was not flat, right? It's down down there at Kitty Hawk. But, but uh, you know, so for me, it feels really important, right? It feels important. And, and, and I, I'm sure that the Wright Brothers that day, if you took an interview there and said, hey, could you imagine somebody flying on a plane from D.C. to L.A.? They would have said, you're kidding me. And they would have not thought about, you know, supersonic, you know, speeds. They wouldn't have thought about all the amazing things. And I feel the same way here. Technology demonstrations are about if you want opening a door to a new, entirely different tool set. And for me, that's what's so exciting about this. Uh, it's we have not yet imagined all the uses of this new technology uh, that we're demonstrating. Absolutely. Now, some people might be wondering, you know, it, we're flying helicopters all the time on Earth. Why is it so difficult to have powered flight on Mars? Why is it such a big achievement? Well, the first thing is you need to be able to get it there. So, you know, we kind of actually, it's kind of funny. It's actually, I, we, I spend a lot of time together with the team trying to figure out how we get it there safely and how to make sure that under all condition, it does not jeopardize the primary mission, which is which is uh, perseverance and, and its sample return. Uh, the second thing, of course, it has to be entirely autonomous, right? The speed of light is just too slow for us to actually control it. So, you know, kind of if you imagine kind of flying uh, whatever you got for your last birthday in a field, right, and kind of picking it up. And if it's not working, setting it back up, you have you don't have those chances. It has to work. And the third part is the environment is so much harder. Right. So it's only one percent of the overall air density. It has wind 10 to 20 miles per hour and and and, and it's in a rocky terrain. So it's not a parking lot. Right. So it's not it's it, uh, you know, the kind of environmental conditions are also challenging. So so it's just those three things together, getting it there, the autonomous kind of failure free nature of it that is required. And the third one, the unknown environment and kind of challenging environment make it really hard. Definitely. Now, as you mentioned before, this is a technology demonstration. So we're not going to be seeing the helicopter you know, flying from LA to DC, uh, you know, so to speak, we're going to be seeing it lifting up and hovering and landing. But with the success of this flight and the flights after it, how do you see this technology being used and, and how do you see it being um, utilized by future missions on the Red Planet? The first application that is really on everybody's mind, especially those of us who are scientists, to go to many places that we can't go to with rovers. Uh, you know, frankly, uh, there's, you know, a lot of the crater walls, you know, where this kind of a daily pattern is of, it almost looks like water seeping in and going down. Remember those images, right? I mean, there's, by the way, debate what it is, but we'd like to go there and image it. There's no rover that will ever go there. It, it's just, it's just not the right terrain. There's many places we would like to go. We cannot go with rovers and this gives us access. I think the second element that's really interesting also is to see it as a supporting element of both robotic and human exploration, kind of a scout that flies ahead. You know, I mean, I remember, you know, many of the firefighters that, that we see, they often have robots that go ahead and make sure that the path is clear and, and kind of it's clear, you know, it's it's off, it kind of scout out what, what firefighters have to do. And so I think of it in that way too, it's kind of as a support element. And then the third bucket of applications is we don't know yet. We actually want the ingenuity of innovators and scientists coming next and saying, now that that works, assuming it works, uh, what can we do? And I think the best ideas are yet to come. <laughs> Definitely. 
So this flight is obviously historic on its own, but it also lands around the 60th anniversary of human space flight. Uh, how far have we come in space exploration in general, whether it's you know robotic or human, since those first humans were launched off of Earth? So we're, of course, excited about the progress that we've made. You know, like uh, many of us, uh, you know, are very impatient, and I'm, you know, gonna, you know, if I always give everybody around me a hard time, and you know, as you should know, it's it's hard to work for me because I'm like, can't we go faster? Because, you know, what we're doing right now is so important. We're setting the speed of exploration in many ways, together with our international and commercial partners. And I think what really has happened, and I think to the surprise of many, is the entire industry that has been built around space flight. You know, whether it's uh, human exploration that I think is just breaking through right now on the private side, you know, with the launch companies, but also with some of these uh, other kind of more tourism or otherwise, you know, virgin, you know, uh, focused companies. I think the second element is on the robotic side, right? I mean, it has transformed how we live, right? I mean, I, this morning I, I drove here uh, based on GPS, and I looked at the weather maps that I know uh, the spacecraft that took those, the images, uh, or spacecraft that NASA built, right, uh, together with its commercial international partners. So what has happened since the Apollo is, is this kind of creation of a, of a whole commercial sector, and, 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 and a, frankly, one that's growing really rapidly right now. And for us, that's opportunity, right, because by partnering with some of these uh, commercial companies and also empowering them being customers we can do things that frankly just are impossible by ourselves so i'm very hopeful about what's next but but not uh not resting because i think uh you know we cannot miss uh the opportunity of really pushing the you know pushing the envelope and, and making sure that we're kind of you know advancing at speed so for me technology demonstrations are really important you may have noticed that in the science mission director, we actually have made a deliberate focus on new technologies, but in te new technology demonstrations into space, because I just think we cannot, you know, pretend that we, we have all the tools in the box that we need. We want new tools uh, for new research, for new applications. Absolutely. Well, Ingenuity is certainly pushing the envelope in a really exciting new way. Um, so, you know, in the steps leading up to this flight, we've seen over the last few days, we saw the helicopter survive the night. We just saw it test its blades for the first time. What's left for the team before we see that first flight? Well, so what's really important in the next uh, day or so is kind of the high speed test and yeah. some of the kind of guidance navigation and control tests, you know, just to make sure that the system is set up and then setting up the whole uh, perseverance ingenuity experiment, right? The cameras need to be set exactly in the right window and make sure that we really can document the flight. And then, uh, you know, uh, just a little bit after midnight, uh, uh, Sunday evening, or, or it's gonna be Monday morning, you know, we're ready, we believe. So we're on track. Uh, it's, uh, there's still uh, some tests, right? I mean, this is a technology demonstration and that everybody needs to know that, uh, that we're going to fly when we're ready, right? So I actually am not imposing any constraints from my side. I mean, for me, it, it, we need to do the right thing. Uh, there's a, and then the team has just done a fabulous job, kind of as we went through these, and also be thoughtful where we saw kind of things that, uh, uh, yeah, okay, we want to make sure the way we're driving away with perseverance is the right way, uh, just to make sure that we, under all circumstances, we do not create kind of a tangled mess, right? Which is uh, one of the uh, changes we made, you know, actually drove away differently. So, so it's it's those steps, but but the, the steps are fewer now, many fewer. Absolutely. So you mentioned perseverance getting ready and getting its cameras ready. Um, for for those at home who might not know yet, as you mentioned, the rover is going to be watching Ingenuity take flight. Uh, you know, obviously for the science team and for the mission team, that footage is extremely valuable but it's also going to be available for people at home to see, you know, as the imagery is processed and released. Why is it important to show things like this to the general public, to have them uh, witness moments like this and have that information? Well, so NASA has, as a rule, and that's, uh, and, and I'm really supportive of that, NASA as a rule kept the cameras on for all important things. Mm -hmm. 
And the simple reason for that uh, is that I don't think we can inspire if we somehow do all of these things in secret and then come tell you later. I mean, one of the, the key elements of NASA is that inspiration is what we're about. So it's not just about achieving the goals. It's also about motivating the next generation of explorers and innovators to to do to do things that are outrageous and, and are, are kind of advancing us uh, going forward. So for us, putting the cameras on are, are really uh, is really important. What we now do, of course, with the Internet and with the ability of of getting a pipeline directly to it, we're putting the data in the hands of innovators and basically say, why don't you see what's there? All of our data, uh, you know, uh, in science are public, you know, and, and we really encourage explorers and innovators everywhere to go find out new science and kind of find out new things about our beautiful universe, our beautiful Earth. And so for us, uh, that is a critical part. So engagement is the the highest form of uh, inspiration. If you actually feel it's so cool that you turn on your computer and, and start messing around with these pictures, perhaps stitch your own movie and you know, figure out how it relates to other flights that you've seen. Uh, you know, like uh, for me, that I mean, those are the key ideas that I think uh, really motivate individuals. So we, for God's sake, we never want to uh, stop that. Quite the opposite. Absolutely. Uh, well, I cannot wait to see the events of the next few days and see Ingenuity take flight. Thank you so much for, for chatting with me today, Dr. Z. Well, thanks to you for your interest and uh, best of luck to all of us. Yes. Best of luck to everyone. Best of luck to you and the whole team. Uh, thanks so much. <laughs> take oh, care. See you later, Chelsea. Yeah, bye-bye.